welcome to our special Australia Day edition of the Trophy Room. And on our national day, I think it's only right that we stop and remember what's truly important to our great nation. Sport and public holidays! Yeah! And we do hope you've had a great day. Whatever you've been up to, barbies, backyard cricket, starting a riot, maybe just getting a tat. Uh, <laughs> but maybe you're an Australia Day ambassador, handpicked for your leadership skills, your charisma, but most of all, your unique way of communicating. Now, here's an example of what I mean. This is cricket legend and Australia Day ambassador, Jeff Lawson, chatting to the BBC a few years ago. Morning, Jeff. Happy New Year from us. How, how would you bowl? How would you bowl at Michael Vaughan? That's all right. And a happy new year to that person as well. I think, I think Jeff got his radio voice and his at-home voice mixed up a little bit there. <laughs> Let's meet uh, two team captains who don't take crap from anyone. Please welcome Amanda Shalala and Adam Spencer. Now, competing for Amanda's team tonight, she was recently named the most valuable player for the third time in the toughest women's basketball comp on the planet, America's WNBA. She's one of the best players in the world. She is Lauren Jackson. <laughs> He's one of our favourite comedians and one of mine. You can see him soon at the Adelaide Fringe Festival. Please welcome a good mate of mine, Tom Gleeson. Lauren, uh, first of all, uh, thanks for joining us. Now, obviously, you're one of the greats over there in the US. Uh, how do the Americans respond to an Aussie being so good at their sport? Um, I think that, you know, I've been over there so long now, I, I don't even think they see me as a, you know, a foreigner. It's, um, you know, obviously, I'm really proud to be Australian. I shout Australia everywhere I go. Um, that must get annoying for your teammates, I imagine. <laughs> oh, no, absolutely. You're yelling Australia out a lot. Yes. <laughs> Australia! 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 <laughs> yeah. Now, Tom, you've just got back from uh, performing in Afghanistan, which I think is a very brave thing to do, to go over and tell some jokes to our troops. <laughs> great. What, what, was it, what, was the, what was it like? Before I went, I had to have a medical exam. And as part of the medical exam, I had to get checked for... I had to get checked for hernias, right? And I won't go into too much detail, but it involved rubber gloves and uh, bits of me that are below the panel. But anyway, the reason why this was a concern for me was... I was going there to entertain the troops. What kind of entertainment did they think I was going to do? <laughs> and then the worst part was, I get over there and I was saying to all the other comedians, oh, how about that medical check? It was a bit full on, wasn't it? And you know what they said? We didn't get checked for any. <laughs> <laughs> it was only me. You will need all your parts to get through tonight's episode on the trophy room, Tom. We're glad to have you on board. Playing with Team Adam tonight, he says he would be prepared to run naked through the streets to see Carlton win the AFL Premiership. But if that's not Aussie enough for you, he was also named Aussie of the Year in 2008. He's award-winning country artist Lee Kernigan. <laughs> Lee. <laughs> and next to Lee, you may have seen her on Kath and Kim or The Chasers War on Everything. And if you if, if, if you've ever played A grade netball, you may have even come to blows with her on court. She's fiery. She's actor and comedian Rebecca De Unamuno. <laughs> Now, Lee, thanks for joining us. Uh, great to have you on board, mate. Thanks, Pete. Um, now, you've won, let's face it, a shitload of golden guitars uh, <laughs> over the years. But on the weekend, uh, you, first of all, you won one for the, the, the most selling album. Congratulations. Fantastic effort. Yeah, good on you. Um, <laughs> Planet Country. That's right, yeah. Planet Country. Okay. Planet Country. Uh, but you, you also lost one uh, on the weekend. <laughs> yeah. they, they presented you the award, yeah. uh, and then I think it was the following day. They kind of said, actually, Lee, we gave it to the wrong person. It was kind of like uh, Australia's next top model, um, more, but more hats and not as many pretty girls. <laughs> you didn't do anything silly like shout in the bar after the win, did you? <laughs> I, I did put in some big shouts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're not the, the first Aussie to be given something and then have it taken away. I mean, uh, there's Sally Pearson. <laughs> We've got Sally Pearson. Uh, you've already mentioned that chick from Australia's next top model. And, of course, uh, there's Kevin Rudd. Uh, <laughs> you are in pretty good company there, Lee. <laughs> now, Beck, uh, what, what does your family do for, you know, on Australia Day and for sport? Uh, my dad is from Panama, from Central America, so um, he's been here for quite some time now and uh, has never understood Australian sport. He <laughs> loathes cricket and, basically, he says, 
Why do you want to do that? You stand in the field all day and the ball may not even come to you. <laughs> what's, what's the point of that game? Here we go with round one. The first person to show me how a netball umpire signaled personal contact gets points. That is correct. That is absolutely nice. correct. Well, that's that's right. Right. Just yeah. nice. I got that a lot. Oh, yeah, I yeah. got that a lot as a parent. Yeah. For a non-contact not... sport, it's pretty fierce. It is. If, if it's too much contact, I believe it's that. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, watch the beginning of this BMX race and tell me what happens next. Okay, they're ready to go. And we're going to stop it there. What happens next? <laughs> Tom. I think I've seen this. Uh, the barrier doesn't open and they all fall over it. <laughs> I hope you're right, Tom. <laughs> Here we go. They're ready to start and go. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Which member of the Australian coat of arms is alleged to have mauled the world's number one ranked... This is a great story. Caroline Wozniacki said she was attacked by a kangaroo. <laughs> let's, let's have a look at the apology. The kangaroo story. Now, I made that because it sounded better than what actually happened. Uh, I walked into the treadmill, so that wasn't really, you know, that's my blonde sometimes that happens. But... <laughs> At the 2000 Olympics, whose hair extension did... Oh, yes. Lauren. I know this already. Yes. Uh, what was the question? Oh, oh. <laughs> Involved, though. Is it hair extension? <laughs> uh, uh, at the 2000 Olympics, whose hair extension did Lauren Jackson rip out during the gold medal match? It was no, actually, that's not correct. I didn't rip out anybody's hair. It was an accident. <laughs> well, but you still, it can, you can still rip out somebody's hair by accident. No, it was. That's an what accident. happened to me. Oh yeah. <laughs> Come on, it was ages ago. This is not a press conference. Just tell us why <laughs> you did it. Why well, didn't do it intentionally? Oh my god. Yeah, Everyone people. thinks I'm the nastiest person in the world because of that incident. Well, what happened though? I did not thought you were a legend straight away. Yeah. Okay, I'll rephrase the question. At the 2000 Olympics, whose hair extension Lisa, fell Lisa. on the floor near Lauren Jackson? <laughs> <laughs> completely innocently. Okay, it was Lisa Leslie. That's correct, yeah. Lisa Leslie. <laughs> Watch this video of a teenager giving Michael Clark batting advice and tell me, what is Clarky thinking? Oh no, it's not looking with your batting. You're pushing at the ball too much. What are you going to do about that? I'm pushing at the ball too much. Yeah, fighting in front of your body and that. You should be a batting coach. Thank you. What do you think I should do about it? Well, play the ball under your nose and under your eye level and not reach for it too much. Okay. That's how you're going to get out. Okay, I'll try that today in the nets. Thank you. <laughs> Now, you can both have a crack. It's uh, purely subjective. What, uh, what's Clarkie thinking? Uh, he's thinking, wow, he's more annoying than Lara Bingle. <laughs> <laughs> Adam? I think he's thinking, kid, why don't you come and stand right here? I need to practice my cover drive. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give you both a point. Yeah. I, like the, I enjoyed both answers. What Michael Clark was thinking, but let's see what was going through the teenager's mind. Uh, Tom, you'd be happy with this because he's in the audience. Please say hello to Daniel Brew with his dad Owen in the audience. Go, guys! Yay! Thanks for coming in, Daniel. What the hell were you doing there, and how did you get into an Australian cricket team press conference? Um, we saw him walking past the nets and we followed him because we thought that had a closed session. Sound like a pretty complicated plan here. <laughs> and because Dean Jones came out and said what you actually said to Michael Clark was actually spot on. That must have felt good. Yeah, it did. <laughs> Any people for the panel, said your panel advice? Um, probably for Lauren when she's pushing the button, you have to go smooth at it. <laughs> Fantastic. I'm a bit nervous now that Daniel's in the audience. <laughs> but uh, let's move on. Daniel and his dad Owen, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> what do the English architect of Bodyline, Douglas Jardine, and the elf Lord Elrond in Lord of the Rings have in common? They've both been played by Hugo Weaving. Correct! Yes! Yeah. Yeah. That's the end of round one. Uh, our team Amanda is leading the way early on in the pesky team. Adam, you're going to play Did Juice. 
Oh, we love the juice. Not to be confused with seduce, which is a game I'm really bad at. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're going to show you a variety of clues now from which you must deduce which sports star they're about. Let's go for the first clue, please. Riley, let's come out. <laughs> can juggle the ball just over 50 times on his feet. Go for it, Riley. Look at this. Look at him go. Holy. So this is a clue, guys. This is the first clue that you're looking at. Right, so he's juggling, juggling the ball. The ball. <laughs> I'm not going there. All right, yes. Are you looking for a soccer player? Soccer. Looking for a great soccer player? So, a soccer player? Uh, yeah, well, I'm going to give you all the clues, so you can, okay. you can but a soccer player... You, I think you might be on the right track. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Riley. Nice work, Riley, yeah. <laughs> Way too talented yeah. at that age. Um, now, OK, we're going to ask uh, Lee... We asked you to bring your guitar and you don't know why. We're going to uh, ask you to sing a little ditty. Hopefully you do know the tune. Um, here we go. As long as it's a country song, mate. It's not a country song. It's this one, in fact. Um, what? Yeah, okay. You've got to be joking. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Take it away, Lee Koenig. <laughs> right, I don't know if I can do this. Um, but It's a pretty popular I might, song. I we may bugger it up, but I'll have a crack. Um, it goes something like this. Um, too sexy for my shirt. Too sexy for my shirt. So sexy it hurts. So I'm, thinking, I'm a model. You know what I mean. When I shake my little touche on the dance floor. <laughs> Too sexy for this song. Oh. <laughs> Very nice. Oh, nice. Sexy? Sexy. Clues. Well, most soccer players are. Mm. Mm. So you're looking for a sexy soccer player, you reckon? Yes, yeah, sexy the clue. Mm. Right. Clue three. This clue ain't big enough for all of us. Oh, yeah? <laughs> bang, bang, bang. And the Oscar goes to... Uh... <laughs> Gunfight? Gunfight? Shot? Shooting? Shootout? Sh Ooh, shootout. <gasps> Soccer. Shootout. shootout. You might shootout. be on the Penalty right shootout. track. It's worth the Inverno. Clue number four, please. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, the special effects are amazing on the front of the room. <laughs> We've got here uh, some red hearts, and all these cards also say heart. There is a team in the A-League called the Melbourne Heart. Heart. Melbourne Heart in the A-League yeah. is a soccer team that yes. a guy who scored a very important goal in a shootout... Egg to qualify Australia when we beat for Uruguay. the World Cup. I think the person you're looking for is John Aloisi! Before we go, before we find out, um, there's one clue you're missing. I'd like to know your interpretation of the second clue. Right, oh, said, right Fred. said Fred. I'm a model. You know what I mean when I shake my little tush. Is he right-footed? Catwalk. <laughs> <laughs> I think he wrote it, it, it could be. Yeah, it's a, it's right, a, it's, said... It's no, because right. you know, John Aloisi, no. John Aloisi absolutely kicked it with his left foot. No. Oh! <laughs> hold it. Hold it. <laughs> hold it. Stop, stop. Hold it. That, that was like watching a pensioner parallel park. <laughs> yeah. That was that <laughs> But I'll tell you what, you little whippersnapper. <laughs> we are referring, of course, to when he was too sexy for the shirt, took it off and shook it around his head as he ran the lap of the victory stadium. Is it John Aloisi? Let's take a look. Hi, I'm John Aloisi. Shooting that penalty goal that night against Uruguay was a massive highlight for me. 32 years of trying to get to the World Cup, we finally got there. It's something that I'll tell my grandkids about. John Aloisi! Yeah.